Madam Speaker, I concede to bringing a fresh list to you. And on the day the government commits to responding to these issues in a sequence, I will return to the House, Madam right Speaker. I thank you. Thank you. Prime Minister's time. Item 9, Prime Minister's time. Oh, Prime Minister's time. Prime Minister's time. Right, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker and colleagues. Members, instead of squeezing yourselves, I request the Speaker uh, to allow our colleagues to come and. Honorable, right Honorable Prime Minister, we have to be sitting. Yes. By the way, right, right Honorable colleagues, let me first tell you this. Uh, honorable colleagues, tolerance is very, very critical for any parliament. I request you, tolerance is very, very critical for any parliament. So, even when you know, we shouldn't be having winners and losers in the house. We, we should try to tolerate each other. And, and especially the language we use will help us tolerate each other. We can use the language which can stock fire, can use the language which can, you know. So I request you, let us try to tolerate each other. We are all members and we cannot fit in this parliament. And our ideas cannot be high. I just wanted to make that comment. Let's go to Prime Minister. I thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, these are very curious moments for us as leaders in this country. And when these moments arise, as the presiding officer, take them in stride for the distinguished statesmen and women from uh, masqueraders, social climbers, and uh, the like. Because Rope, I thought you were going to present the statement. That's the item we have. Yeah, right on the speaker, this is uh, the Lope standing. Mm -hmm. And they can make a preamble to calm the nerves of uh, the house. Um, and it's the reason why we are House of Parliament. Mm -hmm. And for me, a presentation of the nature is not crumb work. I should really make the house feel that we are leaders. We are not here as robots uh, to do crammed stuff. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, we have mentioned before in this house that our country ranks among the worst performers in as far as respecting protecting and promoting of human rights is concerned. On paper, this ranking may not ring a bell to the extent that we can make statements one after another without unsettling the tranquility of the perpetrators of injustice. 
On the other hand, right on the speaker, any step taken to expose and detail the scorecard leading to that ranking has always proved discomforting to the perpetrators and faced a lot of resistance from the upper echelons of the state. Nonetheless, Red Honourable Speaker and colleagues, we shall not relent from exposing the systemic human rights abuses and to plead for the full intervention of Parliament in enlisting this problem and finding a durable solution. Let us speak and colleagues should recall that we as legislators take oath of allegiance to the Constitution. We derive our authority from the relevant provisions and the spirit of the Constitution. And it is to the provision of the Constitution that we owe allegiance. To put this in context, Let us speaker, since the Constitution guarantees and mandates institutions of government to respect, protect, and promote human rights, Parliament ought to be the fort in the defense of the rights and the freedoms of the people. Now, on 17th October 2023, I listened to and read the statement by the Minister of Internal Affairs relating to the arrival and illegal arrest of the Honorable Chagulain and hundreds of NUP supporters, supported NUP prayers and the dispersion of peaceful demonstrations in the Bali constituency. I submit that the Minister's statement was superficial, shallow, tainted with the material falsehoods and misconstruction of the law, and an attempt to justify repression and a cramp down of political dissent in this country. Right on the speaker, I do not find the minister's statement tenable since it has fallen short of addressing the wanton abuse of human rights, the growing state of impunity, general breakdown of the rule of law, and the shrinking civic space. For that, I invite this August House to consider that statement as rejected. Let us speak and colleagues. The minister's statement was further depicted, as further depicted, government is reluctant to address and remedy human rights violations. I must state here that the minister's statement remains rejected, and I invite this Honorable House to consider it as such. It should be recalled that as a result of the infamous November 2020 shootings, many people lost their lives, whereas scores were maimed. Right on the speaker, government committed to have the matter investigated. Government committed to have the matter investigated and audited. However, all that has been archived was the what has been achieved was the categorization of the victims in clusters of 20 persons who were shot and killed by stray bullets, whereas 34 others were shot and killed for allegedly participating in riots. Right on the speaker, the state categorized these citizens as rioters and victims, and that was all. The details of the report remain a top secret, only to the state, despite the commitment by the president to make this, the, the investigation public. It will be exactly three years next month since the angel of death was parachuted onto our streets by the very people charged with the duty to protect. Our memories are yet to lose the well-documented evil work of police patrol number, police patrol triple nine seventeen, on the streets of Kampala for two solid days, and the legacy of its occupants. Ugandans demand to know whether the occupants of that police vehicle were aliens without a trace. 
or their evil acts, a living testimony to the jungle in which we are entrapped. Right on the speaker, Mr. St. Frank, the bodyguard of Honorable Robert Chagrang Center Mo, was intentionally knocked down by a military police vehicle, HDDF 2382. And was going around about. There was no follow up with the family by any state agency three years after his killing. Or at least an excuse of an investigation report confirming that the murder was premeditated. Right on the speaker and comrades, Rita Nabu Kenya was knocked dead off a walkway by a police, a police vehicle registered number UP4841. No report was made, no follow-up with the family. Instead, the family was being warned not to waste time by trying to follow up. Right on the speaker, we are these government vehicles autopiloted that no driver or commander is available to face charges of premeditated murder of these innocent Ugandans. Is the House of Parliament too timid and cowed to demand from the relevant authorities to make a proper count of both the happenings on the fateful days, as well as demanding justice to the families, vic victims' families. Right on the speaker, we have a good recollection of the many innocent Ugandans who were murdered, well as others who were grievously injured while on campaign trail of Honorable Chagulani Robert Centum during the 2021 general elections. Those who were murdered in cold blood, right on the speaker for the record of parliament, I repeat their names. Mr. Senator Frank Karibala, Michael Kalinda, A.K. Zige Wine, Rita Nabu Kenya, Daniel Cheyune, Ibrahim Motasa, Wile Kayondo of Kubi Roundabout, Sophie Kusasira of Kalore B Market, Baker Katoro Wama, short form Namlanda, Martin Yowekiche, Tusubira Elijah, Elijah Mkiwi of Luero, Umaru Semakula of Entebe, Katwere Kimuli of Seta, Musi Alan of Kitet of Mukono, Peter Mwanje of Nansana, Mugera William of Wankulukuku, Batio Sofi of Obongi, Olionji Robert of Obongi, Fungaro Moro of Obongi, Shaba Sheriff of Obongi, Akim Abire of Obongi, deliberately drowned by the UPDF on the 15th of January 2021. Bukere Nufu, abducted from Mukono municipality, murdered and dumped in a Kalangala. Right on the speaker. Right on the speaker. The relatives of the deceased are still reeling in bereavement, with no hope of ever receiving justice for the death of their loved ones. Right on the speaker. Who question whether the People's Parliament is complicit in these wanton murders? and therefore unable to demand accountability and justice. Right on the speaker, the fate of missing Ugandans. On more than one occasion, right on the speaker, I have tabled to this honorable house a list of Ugandans missing over the last two to four years. These persons were picked from their workplaces and homes by state security agencies. Detailed accounts of their arrest and eventual disappearance have been provided by families and friends to whoever cared to listen. Only the state can account for their whereabouts. Right on the speaker, is parliament so frightened, complicit, or disinterested in demanding the government to prioritize human rights guarantees before anything else, for the sake of building a durable human rights record and entrenching the rule of law, did the Parliament buy into the most frivolous and derogatory reasoning of government and its agencies that the addresses and next of kin of the missing persons are not known? But, Honorable Speaker, for the benefit of those who might, for one reason or another, missed out on the record of missing persons for whom the government has ignored accountability and justice. The following Ugandans matter. Moses Simbabazi, Dennis Zimola, 
Shafiki wa Angolo, Martin Rukwago, Peter Kiria, John Damulira, Michael Semodu, Mohamed Kanata, John Bosco Chibalama, who was last seen by the Prime Minister, Vincent Nalumoso, Judas Sempija, Musisi Mboa, Mustafa Luemba, Hassan Mubiru, Isi Masesazi, Godfrey Kisembo, George Kasumba, and Joseph Baguma. But no speaker, those are missing Ugandans. And the record has been ascertained by the Human Rights Commission and the Parliament must, as of necessity and duty, be interested. Let us speaker, the victimization and targeted murder of Muslims. Become fashionable in Uganda, I don't know, speaker, today for an attack or murder committed for the state, the state targets Muslims whom they then indiscriminately kill or imprison without trial. For instance, following the twin bombings of Kampala on 16th of November 2021, Iwan Musa Mudasil alias Muse was shot dead at Wai Sekawempe Division. On the same day, another suspect, Muhammad Kiyowa alias Musa Kiyowa, was shot dead in cold blood. The following day on 17th, November 2021, Sheikh Mohammed Abbas Chirevu was shot dead while on handcuffs by security agencies. This has been the case in many other high profile cases. Right on, speaker and colleagues. By law, any arresting officer is allowed reasonable or necessary force in effecting an arrest. The force employed should be proportional to the circumstances. The use of firearms during arrests amounts to excessive force if the suspect is unarmed. Even if, even if some of the suspects were purportedly evading arrest, the firearm should only be used to incapacitate the suspect and deter evasion, but not to kill. Right on speaker, reports indicate that most of the victims who have been killed were allegedly handcuffed, were already handcuffed, and in essence posed no threat warranting use of a firearm. I would like to throw a quick challenge, Your Honourable Speaker, to this Honourable House to make a random check across any police cell or government prison. The shocking discovery will be that you have more Muslims in detention without trial. Your Honourable Speaker, does Parliament consider every Muslim guilty of terrorism at birth? Why isn't Parliament not keen the following and investigating the witch hunt of Muslims using the fact of information available in so many government prisons and other illegal detention centers? What happened to the men in uniform who carried out these cold blood murders in broad daylight? Are they bound by the laws of the land? I don't know, Speaker, detention without trial. I don't know, Speaker and colleagues, those of us who have not sat in any history class at least have read some literature on Uganda's political history. Detention of people without trial was a common phenomenon in the immediate post-colonial regimes to deter citizens from agitation, for freedoms, and to contain and keep political opponents at bay. The 1995 Constitution, despite its current mutated state, has maintained and sustained the 48 hours rule under custody before one is produced before a competent court or released. The essence of this is to ensure speedy, tri speedy and fair trial and the avoidance of keeping innocent persons in a detention without just cause. Over the last three years, right, Honourable Speaker, the arrest and detention of several Ugandans without trial represents one of the worst abuses of human rights. In the worst case scenario, where the state desired to hold on to detainees without probable cause, trumped up charges have been raised against them. 
These charges cannot be sustained in any court, for they lack premise. Many such victims, including civilians, have ended up in military courts in total violation of the Constitution. Let alone the Speaker. In 2021, over 500 NUP supporters were arrested in different parts of the country on various primary charges. Most of them were released after one year without trial. Some had to pay a ransom to gain their freedom from various military and civilian detention centers. In the group of 2021, Petrono Speaker, over 50 are still languishing in Chitalia and Luzira prisons without trial. 28 of these have been produced in the Army Court Martial, but their trial has never taken shape more than three years after their arrest, including a one Olivia Lutaya, a mother of three little children, who was arrested immediately after birth on the 8th of May, 2021. Madam Speaker, the question of the day is, is the People's Parliament dozing on duty, complicit or timid to demand of the military to account for their actions and the conduct in the court martial where hundreds of Ugandans are casually produced as a show without consequence. Right on the speaker, is the APDF subordinate to the laws of the land or the country was long captured by a certain military junta without an official proclamation of the rule of, of the rule by decree? Right on the speaker, torture in detention facilities Right on speaker and colleagues, the growing culture by the state security apparatus to torture suspects who are in detention. The case of Samuel Masereka, the register of NUP in the Kasese district. Of course, the famous case of Kakwenza or Kila Basaija are classic examples, of, classic examples for people who have ever been abducted by security personnel and subjected to despicable, torturous treatment. Other similar incidents occurred in the recent past. For instance, when the Honorable Chagulani was arrested for Marua and tortured while in detention, Honorable Zake was on several occasions faced it rough, faced it rough to the extent of almost losing his sight and many other incidents. We cannot say that these are isolated incidents. Right on the speaker, I sense danger on muzzling dissent voices, dissenting voices and limiting space for holding accountable those in power. If this happened to, to them today and no statement or remedial action has been taken by government, how shall we all be spared if our turn comes? In the recent past, right on the speaker, this August House has condemned such violations but same old habits have continued to manifest mainly through enforced disappearances, arbitrary illegal arrests and detention, torture and detention, detention without trial, unlawful detentions, extrajudicial killings, property grabbing, political persecution, assaulting journalists and other professionals in the course of duty, among others. <coughs> right on the speaker, human rights violations in fishing communities. Right on the speaker, in 2017, the President of Uganda directed that the UPDF be deployed at major lakes in Uganda following a reported depletion of fish stocks due to over and illegal fishing. Following that deployment, the fishing communities have on numerous occasions cried out on gross violation of their rights by men and women in uniform. Reports of rape, defilement, destruction of properties, murders, and justified arrests, and illegal closure of many landing sites have been reported. Part of the response to these cries by Parliament was the enactment of the Fisheries and Aquaculture Act 2013. The continued presence of the APDF and their selective actions against citizens must arouse the curiosity of any serious House of Parliament. Let alone speaker. Entire communities have been displaced, rendered homeless and jobless, 
Many persons have been killed, maimed, and dishonored. Right on the speaker. Do the victims of these illegal actions have any representative in parliament? <coughs> right on the speaker. In the circumstances, and absurd as described above, we have the following demands for the government to meet without excuse. One, full accountability for the November 2020 murders in Kampala and beyond, including the actions taken on police patrol triple nine seventeen and other listed above and, uh, and those others listed above whose occupants were well captured by different media houses and vigilant citizens shooting live ammunition towards an armed citizens and the intentional killing of opposition supporters in a questionable accidents. Two Honorable colleagues, I have seen an aspect of Parliament being asked a lot of questions, and uh, I think Rob will join me in answering those questions, <laughs> because he's a senior leader in Parliament. Uh, but Parliament, when I was checking in our records, Honorable colleagues, we have given time to issues of human rights. Because I've seen it outside, some members saying, no, they don't consider issues of human rights, they don't. On 18th of August 2022, uh, the House considered and debated the report of our own Human Rights Committee on the status of human rights and human rights violations in the country. Um, on 8th, this was a, it was a 150-page report, and Parliament gave it time we debated it, we gave it attention, and we adopted resolutions. On 8th of February 2022, the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs was given space to present a statement here on reports of alleged human rights violations by the state security operatives. And uh, the issues of torture in this report were extensively handled. And this is on the Hansard. On the 7th of July, 2023, again, the Honorable Nabagali, Flavia, uh, hmm? yes, and I'm a Muchiga, so I, so I don't know much Uganda. It might sound like a Muchiga. Okay? Yeah, but uh, Cassandra, human MP Cassandra raised the issue of human rights and torture, uh, which had come up on international delegations. And the Honorable Cecilio Guar, in fact, is the one who gave a very good guidance, but we discussed this issue. On 18th of July, 2023, the leader of opposition, Honorable Matthias Mpuga, gave his response to the State of the Nation address, and he took a human rights approach. And we had an extensive debate on this. On 3rd of August 2022, the leader of opposition was again given opportunity where he made a response to the State of the Nation address and where issues of human rights were again raised and debated. On 28th of September 2022, the leader of opposition raised issues of uh, Mat matters of forced disappearances and torture of civilians by security authorities, which was responded to, and I think some of the matters are issues which we are trying to uh, work out outside, and the minister will update us on that. So, when you look, these are some of just of the few occasions when you look at some of these few occasions, just in this time alone, I wouldn't think it would be right to indict Parliament that we have not given space to issues of human rights. We have given them space, the answer is there, and the record is very clear. 
Now, correct the issue is, Parliament has where it stops. I don't know where, whether Parliament, I can order, because I have over 500 members of Parliament. I think I order each one of you to go and arrest one of these generals and soldiers. I assign you, you bring them here. Then Parliament will be seen to be biting. Otherwise, for us as Parliament, uh, for my own understanding, is that uh, we can only work through our committees. Our Committee on Human Rights has provided for under Rule 185 of our Rules of Procedure, which has been consistently giving reports. And if there is any other report that is pending, that is ready, I, do, I would welcome it. Now, these committees consist of both opposition and the NRM. Honorable colleagues, if there are other issues with, to do with human rights and you prepare a motion, I will give that motion space on the order paper. So as a leadership, issues of human rights are so very, very dear to us and would give them serious attention. And uh, if there is anyone who knows that he has them, please bring them and we shall give them attention. But what we must know is that parliament has where it stops. And the unfortunate bit of it is things on which we didn't play any role are brought for, for us here to execute. So we depend on information coming from our colleagues. But what is very critical is that as a parliament, when we adopt resolutions, then the minister should bring action taken reports on the resolutions. So, executive, please crack check for me if there are pending, if there are pending action taken reports on issues of human rights, we also bring them out and uh, with your hand. Honorable Sereko. Right, Honorable Speaker. On the matter of uh, arrest of Moses. Procedure. Procedure. Thank you, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. This particular statement. On on Wagawa, we uh, agreed yes, um, that for, for procedure to uh, be fluent, uh, we we'll move with the rule. In respect of Rule 92 of our Rules of Procedure, the statement by the Leader of Opposition is in response to the statement by the Minister of State for Internal Affairs, which was made on Tuesday. But 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 on I the two. I'm coming up, uh, which was made on Tuesday, and the House had not had not debated the minister's statement, which was made in accordance with Rule 53. And unlike Rule 66, uh, Retorno Speaker, which is clear that you can adjourn once you adjourn under 65, the following day business begins where it stopped. Rule 92 is not very clear what happens to the business that was being conducted when the house is adjourned or suspended because of a disorder. So I invite you to invoke your powers and Rule 8 and allow a debate to proceed in accordance with the Rule 92, but may be uh, moderate in the terms of Rule 66. But my biggest other worry is if we debate statements without specific resolutions, what shall we gain and what shall we do as the House? Would it not also be procedural right that in view of the two statements, which are revealing in nature from the leader of opposition and from the minister of state that maybe the two be subjected to a, one of the committees of this house to come up with, speci with, a, speci with a report and specific recommendations for the house to pronounce itself on. I beg to be guided. Thank you. Now, correct. We, we usually mix up the old rules and, and the new rules. So that's why uh, we get a problem. 
For example, under Rule 8, I don't have that power. Uh, under Rule 7 is where I have that power. Uh, okay? Yeah, so I, I, I just wanted that to be clarified. But I'm considering Lopu's statement under Rule 53 as a statement on its own. The statement that came from the minister, we dealt with that business, the way it went, it went that way. I'm not reopening it. The good thing, the one of rope is more as a response. Is more as a response to that statement on top of other issues which the rope has brought up. So substantively when you debate it, you end up capturing all the issues. So let us uh, first allow a debate, the way I had opened it, then along the way, I will see how best to guide. Because we shall also, for example, Rope has made prayers in his statement. Otherwise, we cannot make resolutions on statements. If we wanted resolution, then we would now come in form of a motion uh, so that we can have very clear resolutions adopted by the House. But for now, I wanted to uh, open up for a few members and then I'll call on the minister, he comes in, and then we'll see how best I can gate uh, on the next Procedure in the same one, Ochivundi? I'm rising on a point of procedure. The demands are specific to government. The demands are specific to responsible ministers. For us to have a meaningful debate, it would be proper that government first responds. Then when government responds, then a debate can ensue. Because these demands are not for an individual MP to speak to. We have put these demands specifically to government to respond. And our own prayer and your indulgence, that government is much present here, represented by the Prime Minister, the Chief Whip, the Internal Affairs Minister, the Minister of Trade, the Minister of Finance, and the whole front bench, and would it be procedural right, right on our chair, that we first get a response from the minister, from government officially to our kid, because no MP is going to apologize. No MP is going to answer for all those requests. This demand ends up with a list of demands, lists of demands that only government can commit to. I know the minister has to answer, but on Chivumbi, if you had the statement properly, there are questions which we are put to parliament. And they were very clear, not one, not two, not three, which we are depicting parliament as having failed. Uh, on Chivumbi feels I answered enough. <laughs> because you see, parliament as a body, we can only demand accountability only accountability from government. Now we cannot be an implementing agency. We cannot be an implementing arm of government. So, uh, Honorable Minister, let me first, uh, Honorable Minister, you wanted? Uh, and it's a discretion upon the presiding officer to allow debate or not allowed it. Okay? So, uh, only one set of procedure. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, you had clearly called me to make a statement or to give my views and opened up debate. And the discretion for who should debate in the House depends on you, on any report. However, the answers, whether sufficient or not, lie on the members to adjudicate. And if there is any matter contentious, it can be moved either by persuasion of sight or by vote. Therefore, the procedural matter I would like to raise is as to whether you have now overruled yourself as regards the point of stating that I should be here to speak. Because you had already ruled... I, 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 haven't, I, I haven't overruled myself. I only have an impatient member yes. <laughs> who is not allowing me to first consult further, and then I come with him. I'm still doing consultations. Okay? <laughs> yeah. 
No, we are going to have uh, we are going to have a quick debate uh, on this. But I just wanted to first hear from the minister if he had anything to say. I have keenly followed uh, why the honourable leader of opposition made in his statement. Uh, he raised many issues, some specific to my statement, others new, many old and already responded to, like you rightly said, earlier on a number of occasions uh, on the floor of this house. But I want to say almost all unverified, so I find it difficult to respond to unverified uh, concerns raised by the law without prejudice uh, to what he said. But that said, that said, uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Minister, for giving. Well, you know, you are one of the best officers this country has produced, and I have a lot of regards for you. When you say that the statement has uh, unverified information. Oh, the microphone is not working. Okay. ID? Yes. Uh, would you be kind enough to tell us what is unverified in this statement and what sort of verification would you want? I think we are now going into the substantive content of the paper when you want me to respond to each line. Um, but if I can speak to your request, I saw Lop trying to galvanize uh, uh, effort for his paper, include uh, even the claim that Muslims are targeted, which I found objectionable which I found objectionable. And then he also talked about issues which are still sub in courts of law, which I also found objectionable. So I would want to say this, right honorable speaker and members, I want to say this, um, and you guide on the course of action. Like I said, Many of these have been responded to. The response could have been unsatisfactory, according to law, but that doesn't close the avenue for accountability because we have courts in this country, we have the Uganda Human Rights Commission, we have many avenues uh, through which these issues can be addressed to their satisfaction. That said, I want to commit on the floor of this parliament that government believes in the rule of law and we believe in constitutionalism. But also we want to say that we shall guarantee civic space to the opposition and all Ugandans to exercise their rights and freedoms but that right is also not duty-free. It's not obligation neutral. That it should be exercised with responsibility, with respect to the rights of others. I beg to submit what I was speaking. Thank you. Honorable colleagues, the leader of opposition has raised issues, but also honorable members have their own uh, uh, issues and submission they want to make on the same. So, Honorable Sereko, starting with you. I would like to thank the leader of opposition, the Honorable Mathias Mpoga, for his statement, but also categorically pick on this one. It is so touching from a community I come from, which is the Muslim community, Honorable Minister. 5th June 2023, the home of Sheikh Yunus Kamoga, you all witnessed on TV, was raided. Children were beaten, women were beaten, 
and others were incarcerated. The police came up with a report three days later that it had apprehended those that 13 of those that were in the operation. But up to now, we don't know how far and what punishment or how far those investigations reached. The issue of the late Sheikh Chirevu was never addressed to the family after the twin bombings. Honorable Minister, what a marginalized community like ours demands, because it has been marginalized for so long, this is a reality. Since 1900, when territories were being parceled out in Uganda, we only go to one. So this is not recent. This is pain that we are carrying. Whether it's promotion at duty, whether it's the political reality across all divides that we see today here. From the front bench of the cabinet to the judiciary, to the executive, it's real. And we have to box ourselves in the room and not carry this only as a weapon of reflection of human rights, but proper marginalization of the community. There is pain that goes through our people. And it is real. Whether it is this side, the other side, or any other side, when you look at the reflection of the cabinets of every government, the Muslims, whether it is in opposition or in government, do not have very many seats to boast of. Out of, it's true, I was the chairman of the Equal Opportunities Committee here. Whether it's in the judiciary, regardless of the fact, right, Honorable Speaker, that we have over 5,000 lawyers, we don't even have five high court judges. So let's talk about it holistically. And therefore, no single young Muslim child should be raised up to have fear for law enforcement, arising out of the fact that there is collective punishment and it discriminate arrest. The report I'm talking about of lynching of people in a school is real. Therefore, there is actual fear from a community. And I know we can address this in the civic space. As regards other matters of human rights of incarceration of people, we should be talking about the Constitution and stating it clearly that if someone is not tried after the mandatory date, they should be released. The Constitution is very clear. So what we want in specifics is just a response from the minister to come here and actions that we resolve as parliament, that we encourage government or we enjoin on government to come back with proper accountability for every citizen that is either within its custody or that is in courts of law. And nerves of people will be calmed down. Thank you. Do not take it as an attack, but take it from the issue, from the side of the victims. I'm speaking on behalf of a community that I belong to. Whenever you go to them, the clerics say, we are not so sure of tomorrow because we are picked up at times indiscriminately. Honorable Minister, you need to calm down the nerves of the people in the Muslim community with answers that are real. Thank, Thank you. Honorable And uh, the issue of the debate is the policy, failure in policy, or is it by policy that these things are being done? Is it criminalization of a group? Have members of parliament failed? And individual, failures of individual officers, can it be attributed to members of parliament? Can it be attributed to all, gov all members of government? So whoever has a responsibility has an accountability to make. I would have liked that the speaker guides, if it pleases him, that since we cannot cross-examine the leader of opposition, the report be submitted to the relevant committee, where even the members of the families of those ones who have their people in prison will be accorded an opportunity to come and appear. And then the minister responsible also appears there. And we see the failures of government agencies who have failed to do their work. And in the end, they tarnish the name of government. Honorable members and the right honorable speaker, people who fight the government are not necessarily those in opposition or ADF. There are those people who are employed in government, but they are dissatisfied and they fight government within. 
So I would think anybody who tortures a citizen is actually an enemy of government. So how shall we do accountability when we are not specific? So we should be specific and scale down this to individual officers or departments that have failed. Otherwise, when we now listen to the law, this chamber we are in cannot listen to evidence and cannot cross-examine. So would I, if it pleases you, refer this business to the committee relevant? Thank you. For or you put. Thank you. I'm happy with the report that was submitted. As the LOP was speaking, the, my blood was shaking because of the pain of those families. I am only disappointed on two things. One, the report seems to, de to describe human rights as only political rights or the rights of fishermen without regard to others. Right, Honorable Speaker? There are people in Karamoja who are listening now and feeling bad that in the report of law, in that Rada, his Rada could not read the other parts of the country. It could not read. Maybe there will be another motion it will bring for the other parts of the country where we have people in cells. Or, all those ones will wait for any other, another debate on this matter. Because if we're talking about human rights, it should not be only restricted to the political rights of someone. And if somebody is defending his human right, is it only for central or for the whole country? So, right, Honorable Speaker, I agree with my colleague, Honorable Quizera, that this report be taken to the committee so that the rest of Ugandans can also submit and be heard. Those that don't have opposition. Thank you. Honorable. But I pray it gets my attention. Mr. Speaker, I, uh, I am lucky that I taught in the army for 10 years. And the, the general before us here knows it very well that military police is the main discipline infantry. But when did the military police start coming on the streets to beat people? Mr. Speaker, I pray to the minister and minister of defense, go back to the previous norms. Military police was never coming out. And now everybody is worried. Second, Mr. Speaker, Article 50 of the Constitution, Article 51, 52, gives a lot of powers in the Uganda Human Rights Commission. But Mr. Speaker, when you talk about these investigations, the Human Rights Commission is mandated to even put up commissions of inquiry where they invite people to interface with them. But what's happening with this commission, headed by Madame Nangadia, it has become a face value commission. Wangadia. So I pray, Mr. Speaker, that the issue of violation of human rights is not on one person. Mr. Speaker, I know members of parliament, we shall go for primaries. You know what happens between your side and our side? Everybody suffers. Any, meth any method of mishandling people, not dealing with the rights of the people, is not fair to parliament. I also agree. Let us use this committee of human rights. But Mr. Speaker, I still insist with your powers and the commission, let us look at the Committee of Human Rights. Is it supposed to be headed? Is it an accountability committee or a sensational committee? This committee must be under the opposition to scrutinize what is done. Whenever I talk about beating people, use of guns, it is government. So, this, I can take the information, I remember. Now, honorable colleagues, I guided on information. Now, for me to keep track of the time. Okay? Yes, so to give my honorable has switched on afresh. No. The information I wanted to give my honorable colleague is that we demanded all this from government. It is only proper and prudent from our side to demand the minister responsible to respond to these other things, not to comment on so many other issues. Thank you, sister. The General Minister of Internal Affairs, kindly, kindly, Take back military police in this home. These days I even see them running traffic. 
when people were undressing civilians on Kampala Road because they were merely putting on yellow, that too was colors. And the lead of opposition did not raise it. And that was not done by government. When murders happen, those are matters that affect all of us. But the lead of opposition today did not talk about it, was selective, and this is unusual of him, right, Honorable Speaker. And when it comes to matters of human rights, I have been in this parliament on the green benches. I have had parliament give critical time debate and attention to matters of human rights. When Noop was asked to go to human rights and submit names, reports have come out that no, those names are fake. Are we playing to the gallery, right honorable speaker? Or we are only addressing matters that affect us? So when you talk about human rights, don't make it that, that all, all of us are human and all of us are affected. And I want to say, right honorable speaker, that the government of the National Resistance Movement respects human rights. The Constitution and all matters are actually in order. If there is a, a missing person, right honorable speaker, there, there is procedure to apply to court by writ of habeas corpus to get that person. Thank you. I submit. Honorable Biko. Right honorable speaker, for the opportunity, I have listened to both of the presentations. Right now, speaker and colleagues, as we seek for accountabilities, let us respect the government in power. Ugandans elected the president and all the leaders, including members of parliament. If we do not respect us as leaders, let us not respect, let us not expect that others will respect us. So first of all, let's respect the government in power. Two, the assumption that suspects and victims only belong to opposition is wrong. Because I have people from my own sub-region who do not belong to opposition, but they have been arrested because they are suspects. So we should not tolerate illegalities. Uganda has several rules, several laws, and as members of parliament, we participate in legislation if we do not respect the laws, who else will respect the laws? Therefore, as parliament, we should not condone abuse of our laws that we, we legislate. I experienced a bad incident in my region. People got murdered. Others got hacked. But many people from opposition in my area kept quiet about the people who died, but they were raising issues about the suspects. It means we are not fair. There is a life that is lost. There is a suspect. Therefore, if we are talking about human rights, we should broaden our understanding. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, here, when a colleague is speaking, when you don't believe in, when you don't believe in their opinion or agree with their opinion, it's their opinion. They can never be out of order for submitting, for giving their views. 
when your chance come, we shall also listen to your views. John Am. Uh, thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity. I have I have just one plea I want to make to the government. And this is based on an interaction I have ever had with some policemen. And the fact that I, I want to implore the government over is check with your security personnel and whether they are doing some of these things with their hearts or they are doing some of the things in annoyance. Many times we hear of order from above. Why I am asking if they are doing it from their heart or they are just responding to orders from above and they are not happy about it. And one of them told me, Emmanuel, I want you to know that many times we even realize that what we are being asked to do is wrong, but we still go and do it and we are hurt inside. And that is what I implore the government to look at, that you are having people that you are ordering to do certain things, but in their hearts, they are not happy. And I don't know how far they will continue to be happy without also reacting otherwise. I am not asking for them to, to turn against the government, but I'm asking that let's look seriously into that. I am bringing this because I had my colleague, Honorable Quizera, actually brought out a point which is very important, that somebody who has done something wrong has done something wrong, and we cannot cover and you never know that sometimes some of these people are doing it to sabotage you. So take note of that, and I urge you still, as I repeat, that check this, because you never know how far they go with what is happening in their hearts. Thank you, Madam. Father Nen. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I listened to the report of the Leader of Opposition, and actually... He revealed his unhidden nature. Violence is not only happening in central Uganda, and therefore it should be assessed in that way. There are gun violence happening in, in uh, the greater part of northern Uganda. Karamojong or some wrestlers are abducting people, killing people. I've not heard in his report. The upper issue. The people of Achula are being murdered, being abducted. I've not heard in his report. Right Honorable Speaker, I'm happy that now we are talking as leaders. I'm happy that now I'm in the House. For the past two days, I was even having a feeling of resigning from being a member of Parliament because of the way we've been behaving here. But I'm happy now we are talking as national leaders. And we need to wear the national lenses when we are talking. We don't need to talk because my brother is suffering, my brother. Right Honorable Speaker, in 1980s, some people fed it matoke and milk to feed the lion in the bush. The lion came home with the hope that would, would protect and would promote them, would give them position. They even composed songs, Anyanya Sin and Dola, to talk to the people of northern Uganda. Now we are talking of, you know, clerical, I mean, Muslim clerics being arrested. So many religious leaders in northern Uganda were arrested. So many priests were arrested and brought to here, brought to, to Luzera. About nine priests. I'm a priest and I know and I feel. Now, you are only talking about what, I, what is taking place around here. We need to appreciate that national reconciliation have to take place. National reconciliation have to be promoted. Confrontational approach to any issue must stop. And this is my position, Right Honorable Speaker. I am aware that transitional justice policy was brought to your table. And up to now, it has not yet been, been discussed. I pray that this transitional justice have to be what? Have to be approached by all of us and we look at the reparation policy so that this kind of, this kind of happenings should not happen in the future. And those will also be mistreated must also be paid by the government. Otherwise, Mr. Leader of Opposition, you have not said anything. Thank you.
Honorable colleagues, this is the resolution. The leader of opposition has put very clear questions uh, to, to the minister. Honorable minister, I therefore give you I give you 30 days to respond to the issues raised by the leader of opposition. Where you feel you need clarification, where you feel you need clarification, you write to the leader of opposition formally, because sometimes we don't know which kind of clarification you're seeking. You write him where you feel the statement is not detailed enough, you ask for this detail, and then you respond, we come here in 30 days and we handle the issue. Hello? Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. I would like to initially appreciate the honourable colleagues who have made inputs in this statement by way of their submissions. I appreciate the concerns of the Honorable uh, Nakut, and I want to invite you to read the list on page five. You'll see that Obong is not in Masaka. Uh, so we, we, we try as much as possible to scan the country. But remember that the perpetrators also undertake cover-up of their trucks. And therefore, that's why in my statement, not necessarily by way of inviting parliament, I'm inviting members of parliament to be alive to the troubles in this country. I can understand where my brother, the Honorable Kajurengi, is coming from. That's why we're speaking in whispers about injustice, but not bringing them here. And he's expecting me to do his job. I invite you, Honorable Comrade, to rise to the occasion. I will defend your right to defend your position day and night. I will defend your right to be what you want to be. And I will be the last person to accept anyone to mistreat you for your beliefs. So I invite you to be alive. Don't speak in whispers. If the violators are your neighbors, come and speak about it here. But don't speak in whispers. Honorable Jessica, I'll look out for the dictionary meaning of the word respect so that I can understand how a government is respected in the face of injustice. I can promise you I'll look for it. I want to thank the Reverend Father you see, this is about our country. There are reasons why you were initially a priest and now in the parliament. And because Priests receive deeper training. Deeper training must be followed by deeper knowledge. We can really speak over these issues with a clear understanding of where we are coming from. I don't know, Speaker. I, uh, I wanted to respond to those uh, honorable members with the utmost respect to understand where these matters are. And uh, we need to understand why the minority, quote unquote, would speak and demand for justice. And I agree there should be reconciliation. Reconciliation starts with justice. Don't simply say, let's reconcile while you get away with injustice. Right, Mr. Speaker, you have invited the minister and offered them 30 days. Honest right honourable speaker, that the days is actually allow them to go and even cover up more. We are talking about people in detention for four years without trial, and the minister for internal affairs is hiding behind subjudice as if the constitution was deleted. 
The minister is a lawyer like myself. He's aware of what happens when there's no trial. After 365 days, I'm telling us, sub Judas, I have supplied information as to the military vehicles that knock down people deliberately. He wants me to go and look for them. And in his 30 days, look for his officers, regional speaker. The minister, because they talked about, we have talked about some of these issues. We are demanding for 18 disappeared persons. What did you talk about to them? So what do you say about the 18 missing persons? So that we can go or give you 30 days to come back and speak about them. So the Honor Minister and the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister says he knows where Chibalama is and she needs 30 days. Right on the speaker. So right on the speaker, I think. I want to thank you for your patience. Because these are the reasons why we are here. Whether we have 30 bills to pass. Just an example, right on the speaker. I and I spoke about I talked about it in my statement that in order to respond to the cries of fishermen in the fishing communities, we enacted a law that offered them protection. But after, even when the law is in place, they are still being hunted like aliens. And the minister want 30 days? Reverend right Speaker, we have reported here severally that fishing is being undertaken by government officials, including ministers. It's on the hand side that one of the ministers bears both the name Watch Our Semi. They were initially in blue color, they are now in black color. Same, same people, right on speaker, with due respect and with the indulgence, they don't need 30 days, they need next week to report on action taken on this. At the beginning of this time, right on speaker, I, I ask for one minute. Listen and support. Over 10 families of the missing persons to pay school fees for their children. And the minister wants 30 days. I asked the Honorable Prime Minister that I escort her to go and see Chibalama. And she is needed 30 days. And I want to put it to her that the blood of Chibalama, if it's dead, is on your hands. No, right on the Prime Minister, respect the house. When you enter the house, you first sit and then we. No, you see. I show me she had a she had a gun. Thank you. What is Can I conclude, Honourable Speaker? Thank you. Let me conclude, Right Honourable Speaker. Uh, and the Right Honourable Speaker, that is the lead of government business and her demeanor. And assuming she had a gun in this room, she would be shooting all of us. Prime Minister will respond. I'll give the Prime Minister a chance to The respond. Prime Minister will respond after producing Ichibalama to this country. Thank you. Well, thank you. Right on the speaker, with due respect. Point of, point of order. Let's allow a point of order. Right on the speaker and colleagues. Honourable colleagues, let's listen to one another. Right, Honourable Speaker and colleagues, in the year 2022, you chaired a meeting. Which meeting was attended by the leader of opposition? Where I was, we brought the report. You chaired that meeting. The second meeting was chaired by the Speaker herself. 
and we all agreed that I present a report on this floor. We came, uploaded a, a report. As Honorable Speaker, at the time of presentation, my brother here said they were not ready. And therefore, since that time, that report is with you as parliament. Is this brother of mine in the order to insinuate that I have Kivarama? <laughs> You are aware that the Electoral Commission, the Electoral Commission released the roadmap. And so our brothers in the opposition think they can use Parliament, that they can use Parliament to shout, to show the public. Reverend Speaker, is it in order for our brothers and sisters on the opposition to use the platform of parliament to, you know, become... By the way, you are becoming something different. You are becoming something different. We are here for the common good of everybody in the country. Right, Honorable Speaker, is the human rights only in the in Buganda, some region? Right, Honorable Speaker, I now request you to prevail over our brothers on the opposite side. The point of order I'm bringing is it in order for my brother, for my brother. Please allow me to present. Is it in oh, order for my brother thank, thank you, to right keep insinuating that I, I have the blood of Chibarama? I have what? When in actual sense, I'm not a security person. Are you in order? Thank you. Now, you see, honorable colleagues. Honorable colleagues, I have uh, I have consulted a few leaders outside the parliament, and I've also read through the answered how some of these cases used to be handled and all that. I think the best way, number one, the leader of government business and the leader of opposition. You need to start talking outside parliament. Uh, listen, I have checked how the relatives band was doing it with Professor Atiko. I have checked. <laughs> I'm told times have changed. But when you talk, because look, when you talk, you can't fail to get an answer. You even respect each other. What I'm seeing here, we are going to end up having disrespect. I request, I request from both sides, okay? I have a duty of presiding over this house. Please have respect for each other. Prime Minister have respect. Colleagues have respect. Let us have respect. Because you see, we have been peaceful. <laughs> Now, uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, but now, uh, the Prime Minister, I see, what has disturbed her so much is the issue of going on record, on the issue of Chibarama, that she has produced Chibarama. Hmm? So, Rob, you said the Prime Minister has Chibarama. Okay? Just by your thank, statement. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker. With the indulgence of the right honourable speaker, I played a video in this parliament on record with the prime minister speaking to the media that actually Chivalama is in their hands, that he is a criminal, that he was arrested, and that was record here, right honourable speaker. The prime minister is not going to really impeach our confidence of demanding for Chibarama. Chibarama is on her farm and paying a ransom. 
let her produce Chivalama. She said it. Now, and that's the reason. That's the reason why, right on the speaker, humbly with respect, we decline the 30 days for them to come and report on these issues. And one by one, right on the speaker, the Prime Minister should not come to the House intimidating the House. There are demands that must be responded to with decorum and in sequence. Right on the speaker. Thank you. Government Chief Whip wanted to add. Uh, right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, I rise, Mr. Speaker, to seek for your guidance in two respects. Guidance number one, in order to make what you have directed much more easier, and this has been our request all along, right Honorable Speaker, when you look at page 4 and page 5 of the statement by the Leader of Opposition, we have always requested for better particulars, better particulars of the person allegedly abducted. And when you look at page 4 and page 5, we are only stating names. Honorable colleagues, we all have residences. Right, Honorable Speaker, that is my point of guidance number one. In meetings you chaired, in meetings chaired by the Right Honorable Speaker ourselves, as government we have always asked. State of Bua Dennis Amson, a resident of Amendit village, Awari Parish, Abakusab County, Ajuri County, Aleptong District, reportedly abducted on Kampala Road. This is what we need. And we still pray for that, as you guide. My guidance number two that I'm seeking for, right honorable speaker, I have looked at the list, because listed by the leader of opposition. Just like the Minister of Internal Affairs stated before, there are those that were investigated before. There are those that are still under investigation, including a committee of parliament. There is an investigation before the Committee on Human Rights, and there are cases that are in court. I want to mention names investigated before and put it on record, because I want to ask for how long shall we come here to demand for the same names? Um, Mr. Speaker, on the 10th of October 2023, Uganda Human Rights Commission released a report on the alleged cases of missing NUP supporters, and this was issued by the chairperson and signed by the chairperson of the commission. This is an area where a number of names are appearing on the list, already investigated by a constitutional commission mandated to do that. Number one, Mr. Mbabazi Moses, appears on the list, already investigated. Number two, Chiria Peter, already on the list, investigated. Damulira John, Semudu Michael, Kunata Muhammad, Chivalama John Bosco, Musisi Umboa, Mubiru Hassan, Isma. The report is here and right honorable speaker, this is the report of a constitutional commission I beg to lay on table. I beg to seek for your guidance in those two respects. Now, honorable government chief whip, the minister requested for time. Oh, okay. The minister has confirmed he never asked for time. But there are questions we should answer. Okay? Minister, if information is available, 
you can answer on Tuesday. Yeah. Or if you feel the answer you've given now is satisfactory, you say this answer is satisfactory. We don't have these people. It goes on record. And, and we know it is sorted. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, I have, like I said before and like has been amplified by uh, the lead of government business and the government chief whip, these are issues we have responded to. Otherwise, you want us to regurgitate what we go to work. But we don't have anything new to submit on the matter. Lop. Dear Right Honorable Speaker, I want to thank most sincerely uh, Comrade Amazon Obua for the document he has laid. And I want to agree with him that the Human Rights Commission, which is the Constitutional Commission, confirmed 18 missing persons. I don't know, Speaker. And their list does not differ from what we have and have submitted on the floor parliament, including uh, Chibalama in the hands of the Prime Minister. Right on the speaker, if, if there is a government, order. Right on the speaker. Right on the speaker and colleagues. It is on record that Chibarama, according to their report, was arrested in 2019. In 2019, I was a humble commissioner in this house. Secondly, right honorable speaker, I am not an arresting officer. I have never arrested anybody in my life. And so, is this lead of opposition in order to insist despite the report Honorable Speaker the lead of opposition, like I said earlier, has always been with us, and we are always in touch. By the way, I'm very close to the lead of opposition. Very close. If you didn't know. We have been having reports, myself and him, from police, now Human Rights Commission. He's aware. By the way, he might even be aware where Kibarama is than me. Point of order? Which point of order? Honorable right Speaker, is it in order for the leader of opposition to continue insisting that the leader of government business, me, I have Kibarama when in actual sense he knows I'm not an arresting officer? Is it in order? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Honourable colleagues, but there is a point of order raised. Honourable yeah. Yeah. Uh, colleagues, I think we are going to lose focus of the major issue. Now, I remember when we had that meeting, because Honourable uh, Rope, you would make it, you would make it easy. The government say, side is saying. The government is saying, you have given me a name, Joseph Baguma, George Kasumba, Isma Sesai. Where do I start from? Okay? That's what they are saying. If, if for example, I gave you a name now from, from Uganda and I say, Tayebwa William. I need you to produce him. Tell me where he is. Where would you start from? Okay? Uh, where would you start from? Now, 
Rob, do you think is there any way we can have more details? We put meat to this so that the minister is able to for us. Right on the speaker. For starters, I'm glad that the Prime Minister confirms that Shivanama was arrested in 2019. Of course, as uh, an advocate, that's a very good starting point. Um, the, the lead of government business is a supervisor of all these agencies and they can trace from the people who arrested the Chibalama in 2019. If uh, he was burnt in an acid tanker, we can take the tanker. At least he was arrested. There's only one agency that can arrest. So you still have a duty to trace you are arresting from your arresting agencies eh, where Chibalama is. I want to, to, to assure you that his blood is on your hands. Right now, Speaker, the, I have a document here on my file. I submitted it on the floor of Parliament in 2021, including addresses, telephone contact for every next of kin. I even supplied the telephone contacts of next of kin from whom some state agencies are asking for ransoms to release their family members. Clearly, with a statement saying on this one they were demanding for a ransom. It is a record of parliament, right on the speaker. Right on the speaker, before we go into the others that are, are, at least are not, uh, have no record, at least those in the Human Commission record have addresses. In fact, on the day this statement was released, the chairperson purported to say that they were missing some record. The following day, family members delivered national IDs of these missing persons. The Honorable Abdallah Chuanuka, my shadow minister for internal affairs, even offered to deliver the Minister of Security to the home of Ewan Kanata, Mohammed, who was picked by security in uniform in Walusubi, in Mukono, in 2021. Dr. Speaker, I can recall one by one. So it's frimuse, it's hiding away from responsibility of a government with the dissos with the gissos, with the pisos. I even hear the idea of pisos for family. So, right on the speaker, I know how governments collapse. Unless we are seeing a trace of a collapsing regime, that they cannot make a trace even with information of missing citizens. Right on the speaker. So if the minister does not need time to come back here and he has information, we are waiting for it, Mr. Speaker. Minister for Internet. What we are not going to accept is the frimuse excuse of the, the supplied information. Let him regurgitate what he informed this House on case by case, Mr. Speaker. Right, Honourable Speaker, I don't know. I will say it for the upteenth time. I think the Honourable Law has laboured to extract a confession by grace using the House. But I still say, I, I, I have no information further than what we have already submitted on the matter. Lord, uh, you have said you have some information in your file. Would you kindly lay it here so that I pass it over to the minister right now. I know it might be in our hands, but for purposes of flowing well with the session, because now it would require me to go tell the clerk, extract this for me, I give it to him. Uh, if you have it here, would you mind uh, laying it over? Right on, Speaker. That's a personal file. Unfortunately, Parliament pays me not to supply government with uh, personal information. 
but I can avail a duplicate copy of this file after agreeing on when is the minister supplying <laughs> supplying a response. Thank you. If the minister is willing to supply a response in the media say, then I can consider. Because after this session, I'll be able to supply a file. And then the minister can give us how much time he needs. Thank you. Honorable Chief Whip. Right, Honorable Speaker, with your permission, you would permit me to pick um, the name that uh, future dear prominently in the report of Uganda Human Rights Commission. And I read the findings of Uganda Human Rights Commission on Chibalama John Bosco. The commission made several attempts to trace and record the statement of Natulinda Rita, a wife to the victim, but she has not been cooperative with the commission team and intentionally refused to give any information to the team. Specifically, during the July to August 2023 investigations, the team reached out to Natulinda through a known telephone number and she claimed that her husband is still missing. She informed the team that she was in Kakiri. The team then proceeded to Kakiri, but she could not answer her calls despite several phone calls which were aimed at seeking clear direction to our residents. However, when the team used a different phone number, she picked up she picked up the call and requested them to give her a few minutes to avail herself. The team waited in vain, and when they called her again, she refused to answer the call. I beg to provide this information. I need protection, honorable colleagues. Right, honorable speaker, the issue of human rights transcends even our political divides. If we go to the jurisdictions where we pick our chapter 4 of the Constitution, they are in the habit of suspending everything to ensure that human rights are protected. But for us to give integrity to this House, since the matter is on the floor, we must have an avenue where it must be put to total rest. And instead of having a hula ballo from the left and the right, why can't we have an independent committee to hear from both sides and then we have a final position on the matter. This will give integrity to the House but it will also settle the challenges the various families are having. If truly their own are missing, they are in pain. If it is being used as a political tool by both NRM and opposition, then it shall also be put in the limelight. Right, Honorable Speaker, I beg to submit. Thank you. So, Rob, you had wanted to... Right, Honorable Speaker, we are a people's parliament. And it facilitates us by far when people get to know what we do in parliament. For external channels, right, Honorable Speaker, it's understandable because we don't control them like UBC. But for our YouTube channel to be off, for all the days we have spoken on human rights issues, it keeps people in the black, in the dark. May I request, Red Honorable Speaker, that we are facilitated with YouTube, YouTube channel, parliamentary channel, for people to know who is for human rights actually and who is not. People are kept in the dark about their talks of members of parliament here in the house. I pray, Red Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Now, honorable colleagues, I have uh, the media in their, in their chamber. If they want to stream to YouTube, but they can do it. If uh, I, I, I didn't know YouTube and what is not on, so I mean, I'm seeing I have media here. Okay? So, and we have a answer. What is very important is a answer here. Everything done here is being recorded. And anyone who speaks what the media feels they should cover, they will cover it. I just wanted us to conclude this. Number one, Rule 52, uh, Rule 53, two, I, we have already exceeded an hour. We are limited by one hour. Number two, 
it has come to time for Prime Minister's time. So I gave, I gave my ruling earlier on. And uh, I want to stand uh, by my ruling, but I said within 30 days. So I'm going to engage uh, both sides. Rope, uh, Rope, I would, uh, Rope, I would request that tomorrow you avail this information to the minister, and then for us we shall require the minister to make a statement in response here with very clear details. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Reverend right Speaker, for being patient. And that's why I said in my preamble to the statement that these moments bring out uh, statesmen and dissipate them from uh, demagogues and, uh, 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 and the social climbers. Reverend right Speaker. Right on, Speaker, I, um, on another day, if the rule is permitted, I would have cross-examined the, the government chief whip over the statement he read here. <laughs> but if the rules do not permit, I will not. Right on, Speaker, I concede to bringing a fresh list to you. And on the day the government commits to responding to these issues, in a sequence, I will return to the House, Right Honourable Speaker. I thank you. Thank you. Prime Minister's time. Item 9, Prime Minister's time. Oh, Prime Minister's time. Prime Minister's time. Right, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker and colleagues. Members, instead of squeezing yourselves, I request the Speaker to allow our colleagues to come and. Honorable, right Honorable Prime Minister, we have this city. Yes. By the way, right, right Honorable Colleagues, let me first tell you this. Uh, honorable Colleagues, tolerance is very, very critical for any parliament. I request you, tolerance is very, very critical for any parliament. So, even when you know, we shouldn't be having winners and losers in the house. We, we should try to tolerate each other. And, and especially the language we use will help us tolerate each other. We can use the language which can stoke fire, can use the language which can, you know. So I request you, let us try to tolerate each other. We are all members and we cannot fit in this parliament. And our ideas cannot be high. I just wanted to make that comment. Let's go to Prime Minister. Right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, we realize that uh, the political tempers are coming high. In our dif different uh, political divide, and so people want to be seen, at least to be doing something. So, however much you tolerate, for them, they have a mission. Their mission is to corrupt the government. And we cannot allow. So let us continue, members. Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Helen Kaunde, woman MP, uh, 17th cabinet approved a policy. Uh, right, Honorable, I have a procedure. From the senior. 
especially in terms of listening, so that we can have a side. That's why it was built for two sides. Whether it's one member here and a southern here, that one voice should be respected. And that one voice also should respect this one. But you see, also cautiously, when you're dealing with the minority, the psychology of the minority is totally different from the psychology of the majority. The psychology of the minority usually feels I'm being suffocated because I'm a minority. And someone gave us an analogy. What the rabbit, what the rabbit told, uh, I think, one of Bahat were there. The, uh, the, the rabbit, I think, told uh, a lion, it says, you're going to eat me, but you, you won't eat me with salt and onion. You'll eat me with dust. Right, Honor Prime Minister, I don't know if you've heard this. The rabbit told a lion that you're going to eat me, but you won't eat me with salt and onions. You'll eat me with dust when I'm dirty. So what does that help? Do we want to win here out of a dust war in the house? The issues being discussed here never happened here. Are uh, issues which have been fed to be solved outside. Now they've been brought here as a platform. So, because here is a platform where you can raise any issues and we use words we urge. Let us not dismiss each other. I don't know, Prime Minister, I'd be grateful if you invite Lop for a cup of coffee. You start engaging. I know, uh, but that is discretion, of course, on your side. You said here that uh, you're very close, than we know. <laughs> so you can take advantage of that. I'm sorry I've taken that long rebelling on that line, but I will just be comfortable in this house if both sides are here. But for now, since I didn't receive any prior warning, we have to continue with the business of the house, okay? As we build consensus. Let us not tire. Let us try to reach out to our colleagues and build consensus, and we come back to the house. No, honorable colleagues, uh, Let us continue with the Prime Minister. She has lent us a few minutes. Uh, I know if she wanted, if she was difficult, she would say, no, it's the Prime Minister's time. And so, sometimes we shall be keeping quiet. But remember, even Jesus at one time, he turned the tables. <laughs> Let one level speak and colleagues the number of questions, but I will start with Helen Kahunde. Uh,